there. Thank you for joining me as we talk about living in an earth suit. You ever pay much attention to what David says in Psalms 139:14, where he says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. When you think about it, the body is a pretty complex organism to figure out. I mean, we've got so many body parts that won't even know what they're for. We can definitely agree with David that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Let's take a look in the book of Genesis to see what we're really made of. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 reads, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness notice god did not say let us make a man in our image or let us make men in our image after our likeness to say men would be to make all male species but in verse 27 it says so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. The word man refers to humanity as a whole, male and female. So when God said, let us make man, he was referring to humanity. So the question is, if God made man in his image, then what is God? Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 reads, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Matthew 3, Matthew chapter 3 verse 16 reads, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descendant like a dove and lighting upon him. John 4, 24 reads, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, if God is a spirit and we are made in his image, then that means we are spirit beings. Sometimes you hear people say, I have a spirit. No, we don't have a spirit. We are a spirit. Okay, so we don't have a spirit. We are spirit. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says, it lets us know what God did with our spirits. It reads, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So it wasn't enough for God to give us a body to house our spirits, but he also breathed his breath into the body to give it life. So the real us is spirit. We live in a body and we possess a soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions. God did not create us as robots or puppets on a string to control our every move. Instead, he gave us a will, which is the right to choose whether we're going to obey or disobey his word. Not only are we made in God's image, which is spirit, but we are also made after his likeness, which refers to his nature and his character. God's nature is love and compassion and that is what we are to reflect through our bodies when God looks at us he should be able to see a clear reflection of his love and his compassion so now that we know we are spirit and have a body and possess a soul what does all this mean when God created the heaven and the earth, he was actually extending his heavenly rule on the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 says, God's purpose for man was to have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. He gave rulership over the earth to man, which means we get to experience what it is like to rule just like our creator king, meaning we get to manage and take care of his earth until Jesus returns. In order for you to understand the significance of this, you have to first understand that when God said, let them, he was excluding himself from having dominion over the earth. God's rulership is in heaven, and he gave rulership to man over his earth. Therefore, in order for man to rule on the earth, he needed to have a body so that he could experience life on the earth. Spirits can't live on the earth without a body. So the body makes our spirits legal on the earth. Take, for example, an astronaut, an astronaut team inside of a space shuttle. If one of them is assigned to an extravehicular activity, which means he or she has to go outside of the space shuttle to complete a specific task, because our bodies are made to live on the earth, that astronaut will require a special spacesuit to protect his or her body from the hostile environment that they're about to enter. Even while they are out of the space shuttle, they are in constant contact with the commander in the shuttle to help guide them on their mission. If the astronaut decides he wanna disconnect from his commander and do the mission on his own, he will literally be lost in space. Well, in the same way, our body allows us to experience life on earth as we stay in direct connect, contact with our commander in chief, the Holy Spirit, who guides our hearts in successfully completing our mission on the earth. If we don't take time to consult with our commander in chief about our life journey, we too will be completely, if you will, lost in earth. <laughs> because our spirits never die, they have to have a body to live on the earth. When we die, our spirits can no longer live in the earth. They have to leave our bodies. If we are followers of Christ, then our spirits get to go to heaven. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 reads, Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Verse 8 reads, We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from this body and to be present with the Lord. If we are not covered by the blood of Jesus, then our spirits will not live in his presence. Matthew 7, 23 says, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's Jesus talking. So when you think about all of this, I hope you will have a better understanding of who you are and why you are here in this body. Your body is not your own, but it is for the Lord to use to do his kingdom business on the earth so that the whole earth will be filled with his glory and his desire to have his children rooting the earth will be fulfilled. God bless you. Have a kingdom productive kind of day. Amen.